it's Sarah here from BJC Health coming to you from Sydney, Australia. Uh, thanks for showing an interest in one of our educational events. You're about to watch part one. Um, so enjoy the event. If you've got any questions about the content, then please consider joining BJC Connect where you can access all of our facilitators live. Um, otherwise, please consider leaving a comment and we'll do our best to get back to you. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, so I am going to talk a little bit about anti-inflammatory eating tonight and how it relates to arthritis. Please get your questions ready. I'm hoping for lots of really good questions tonight. I'm going to try and not talk too much. Um, if you haven't heard some of these talks before, I definitely recommend that you go into our lifestyle recordings. And we did two anti-inflammatory slash Mediterranean style presentations. One was in June of 2022 and one was in December um, a few months ago, 2022. And I listened to them again today. And there is some really good information um, about anti-inflammatory eating and a lot more food presentation in those um, two podcasts compared to what it will be tonight. Uh, one of them was in my kitchen, so I had a lot of space to spread out a whole heap of food. And one of them was in my office and I had a whole heap of food behind me. So if you're interested in seeing a little bit more color and listening to um, some of the points we made last time that were not just about arthritis, they're a little bit more global, um, please tune into those two recordings if you haven't heard them before. Okay, so where are we with anti-inflammatory and arthritis? Now, even though in the 23 years or more that I've been a dietitian um, and I see a lot of evidence in my clinical practice of clients making practical changes to their diet and being able to see in person what that can do for them in terms of managing arthritis as well as other health conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, weight management, blood pressure, gout, et cetera. We do like to talk about evidence-based practice. I know that anti-inflammatory eating can work really, really well. Unfortunately, not, not a lot of research, um, not as in-depth in research has been done in this area. It's still quite new. Um, we know that anti-inflammatory eating or Mediterranean style of eating, there's a lot of evidence for heart disease. There's a lot of evidence for um, how it links to type 2 diabetes. But there is not as much evidence or, or good quality or the highest evidence that we'd like to talk about um, in terms of arthritis. However, um, there are um, there is quite a lot of research and there is um, strong links or moderate links to how anti-inflammatory eating can assist with um, reducing arthritis pain, reducing inflammation, um, especially in, in, in inflammatory arthritis, so, such as rheumatoid. Um, not as much in osteoarthritis, especially if your osteoarthritis is a lot more mechanical rather than inflammatory based. Um, that, that can be a different mechanism for pain. Um, but in inflammatory arthritis, we know that, that this type of eating can help with reduced swelling, um, reduced pain. Um, it can actually slow down disease activity, which is quite a positive finding in some of the research studies. Um, and it can reduce your inflammatory biomarkers. Um, like CRP, um, interleukin-6, for example. So there is evidence uh, that there are good links. It, it, it's going to take a little bit of time, I think, and the right kind of research um, at the highest level that we want, um, double-blinded, peer-reviewed, et cetera, et cetera, for us to get um, better quality we know that the things you need to avoid on the anti-inflammatory um, anti diet, which I will talk a little bit about, um, things like sugar and saturated fat, et cetera, we know that that's linked to uh, a lot of the disease states like heart disease, um, diabetes, weight gain, increased inflammation. So 
just even with what we know that where we are at evidence based at the moment i feel personally that it's enough to encourage everybody to be trying to follow this style of eating so um Another particular, there's a nurse's health study which involved thousands and thousands of women over lots of years, and that study found that anti-inflammatory eating can potentially help prevent arthritis altogether. As most of us at BJC, we've, we've already probably been diagnosed with some level of arthritis. Um, we're not in that prevention phase. We're in the management phase and how much we can um, slow down the disease, improve pain, um, get more mobility, increase our energy levels, et cetera. Um, but the anti-inflammatory diet can help with that as well. Okay, so what are some of the things that we can do on the anti-inflammatory diet? Or what, what are we looking to do? What food groups um, are we trying to increase? Now, a lot of you would have heard me talk already but I'm going to go through these food groups just so that everybody's on the same page. Um, so one of the first things with anti-inflammatory eating is to increase your fruit and vegetables. So I've got a few trusty things here, like the good old broccoli. Look how deep that green colour is. Um, the more colour you can get into your diet, the better. Um, I've got my um, strawberries here full of antioxidants. Uh, they have something called a high ORAC score, which um, is a score for, for fruits particularly that tell us how much antioxidant load is in them. And berries have got some of the highest ORAC scores. So it's always good to put um, berries into your diet. Got some nice deep red cabbage here, which would be part of the anti-inflammatory eating plan. Um, things like cucumber and zucchini some of my favourites or some of my kids' favourites, which is why I've got lots of them in the fridge, um, good old apple. So looking at increasing your fruit and vegetable intake. Ideally, we are trying to get five serves of vegetables per day. What is a serve? A serve is half a cup of vegetables or one cup of salad vegetables uh, with uh, or lentils and legumes, it's half a cup. They go into the vegetable group as well as they can be protein and carbohydrate. Um, so half a cup of legumes is a serve. And with fruit, one piece of moderate sized fruit, so like this, one apple, one orange, one pear, one peach, one nectarine, all about this size is a serve. Two smaller fruits is one serve. So two apricots, two kiwis, two plums, is a serve. One cup of fruit salad is a serve. And then everyone asks me things like, am I allowed to eat grapes? Sure, a serve of grapes is about 15 grapes. Uh, cherries is about 15 or 18. It's about three figs, five prunes, uh, three dates, or like a tablespoon of dried fruit, which we don't recommend so much to eat lots and lots of dried fruit because of the concentrated fruit sugar. Now, vitamin C, which we, we get in our fruit, which is part of the anti-inflammatory food plan, is important for preventing inflammation. So that's one of the reasons why you want your two serves of fruit in there per day. Uh, things like your leafy green vegetables, and, and I know you've all heard how important it is to eat green leafy vegetables. Um, they can be high in uh, vitamin K. Um, vitamin K is linked to reducing inflammatory markers. So try and get your spinach, your kale, your broccoli, your bok choy, your Asian greens um, regularly into your diet. So if not on a daily basis, um, most days of the week trying to get green leafy vegetables. Um, fruit and vegetables are also jam-packed with antioxidants and these are powerful chemicals that help reduce oxidative stress and free radicals and DNA damage. So all of these antioxidants is what we need to help reduce inflammation and to protect your cells and the integrity of your cells. So having your fruit and vegetables every day, trying to do the five-two 
uh, is quite important. If you've heard about something called the DASH diet, which is the dietary approaches to stop hypertension, um, also kind of a, a sidearm to Mediterranean eating, they recommend seven serves of vegetables per day. Now, that's quite a lot. And, and um, I think possibly only one or two of 10 Australian adults are currently meeting the vegetable recommendations per day, which is the five serves. So most of us have a lot of work to do just to get to the five serves, let alone follow something like the DASH diet, which um, asks for seven serves a day, which is quite a lot. So try and think about your fruit and vegetables, incorporate them from early on in the day. I think that's one of the key things that my clients and I talk about when we're having one-on-one -on -one consultations is if you're going to get five serves, we're not going to be able to get them if we only include vegetables at dinner. Um, we need to think about how we can incorporate them into some of our breakfasts, snacks, and definitely trying to at least get lunch and dinner. And it makes it a lot easier to do that. Okay, what other aspects do we have to um, the anti-inflammatory diet? So I've talked a lot about nuts before. So I've just got some macro natural mixed nuts here, which have got walnuts, almonds, a uh, bit of cashew, a bit of pecans. It actually looks like quite a nice mix. I bought that today. And I've got um, some chia seeds here as well, macro chia seeds. And on the front here, it says source of plant-based omega-3, magnesium, as a helpful fatigue fighter. Oh, that sounds so good. A bit of alliteration, um, fatigue fighter. And antioxidant goodness. For those of you that don't know, I'm actually studying a master's of teaching at the moment. So there's a bit of alliteration. Um, and antioxidant um, goodness. So we know that nuts and seeds are really good for health. So there is a study, um, some studies out there that talk about People who eat a lot of nuts and seeds have a, something like a 51% decrease chance of dying from inflammatory diseases. That's pretty convincing. So a serve of nuts is 28 grams or a quarter of a cup and seeds are one to two tablespoons. And you can eat them every day of the week. And we know that the research suggests that it can really help with um, reducing inflammation. So a mix of nuts is good. Just try and make them unsalted. That's really helpful. Um, and you can eat them for snacks. You can throw them into salads, stir fries. You can roast them natu naturally with their own oils to make them taste a lot nicer. Um, you can crush them and put them with yogurt and fruit. You can put them with your porridge or you can buy some really nice mueslis or make your own. So oats being one of the whole grain foods that you can add to the grains part of the anti-inflammatory eating plan. Um, oats go really well with lots of nuts and seeds and you can make it as, um, uh, as a muesli. Uh, so if you're not, obviously if you're allergic to them, it's the only reason why you don't eat them. But otherwise... If you're not eating a lot of nuts, I would definitely recommend that you get those into your meal plan somehow. The other good thing about um, nuts is that uh, the monounsaturated fat is very helpful or the unsaturated fats, uh, and that has been um, deemed to be part of the fighting inflammation part of the nut. They also have fibre, zinc, magnesium, uh, depending on the type of nut, like Brazil nut has selenium, which is really good for your immune system. Uh, almonds have some calcium, which is really good for your bones. A lot of the nuts and seeds have got B vitamins in them, which is really important for unlocking energy um, and in the metabolism of foods. So nuts can also help with um, fatigue management or you know helping with uh, energy. They're a plant-based protein. So if you are trying to be more plant-based in the hope that that could help with pain management with arthritis, then nuts and seeds will provide protein. 
They're a good source of fiber, so really good for your gut um, and helping with gut microbiome and the diversity of gut microbiome. Um, and they, they also can help with blood sugar control and cholesterol lowering. So there is a big link with uh, the portfolio diet and how nuts can help reduce LDL cholesterol, uh, which is the bad cholesterol that we can have. Um, and because they are protein and good fats, they help to reduce your insulin um, spikes or, or your insulin and sugars rising in your body, which can be um, very helpful for people with diabetes. But arthritis is linked more with things like diabetes and cholesterol and heart disease. So by using these foods as the anti-inflammatory eating plan to help with arthritis, you can also be reducing your risk of other um, comorbidities, we call them, other conditions that you might have at the same time as something you're already managing. So nuts are really good. What else can we put into our anti-inflammatory eating plan? Uh, lentils and legumes. So lentils and legumes are also one of the main plant-based proteins that you will eat. Um, they have been shown to reduce CRP levels, which is um, one of your inflammatory markers. They're full of phytonutrients and fiber and are an important part of Mediterranean eating. Uh, so if you're doing that pattern of eating or anti-inflammatory eating, which um, if anyone is wondering, are very intertwined with the similarities that the two are. So anti-inflammatory eating and Mediterranean style of eating are, are, are pretty much the same groups of food. So any of the lentils and legumes are okay. So I've got, you know, some chickpeas here. So you, if you want to do them in a can, you can just drain them and rinse them and then they're ready to put into anything. Casseroles, soups, salads, um, you can eat them as they already are. They've been pre-soaked and pre-cooked. So you can have them cold or you can throw them into things that you're cooking and then they can be um, hot or warm. Um, brown lentils like, like this uh, where you rinse and drain them in a can. But you can also do things from scratch. I've got my beautiful red lentils here, which I like to add to things like if I'm making a dal or I might put it into a soup and then blend them in and, and then my family doesn't technically know that they're in there, um, but a really nice way to have an anti-inflammatory hit to something. Um, or you can use, you know, things like split peas uh, and it doesn't matter if they're green, doesn't matter if they're yellow, doesn't matter if they're red, um, they're all under the same umbrella. Um, and I'm also a big fan of hummus, which has chickpeas in it, uh, olive oil, which is part of the anti-inflammatory eating plan, uh, a bit of garlic, which is full of antioxidants. So as long as you buy one where a brand, uh, if you can make your own, that's even more fabulous. But if you buy a brand that is high in chickpeas so that um, you're not getting a lot of filler, there's not a lot of maybe additives or other things in it, chickpeas, olive oil, garlic, lemon juice, and tahini is basically what um, the even the pre-made ones should be. You don't want num lots of numbers and things, uh, numbers that keep things stable, but not um, extra additives, etc. So lentils and legumes are really helpful. Uh, what else do we have? Um, fatty fish. So that's one of the big parts of the anti-inflammatory eating plan is to try and increase your intake of omega-3 fatty acids, as well as just generally good fats. So omega-3 fatty acids can also reduce CRP levels. Studies have shown that there is a link there. They can also um, potentially reduce interleukin-6, which is another inflammatory marker. Um, I've got a big tin here of tuna. You want to try and go for fatty fish, salmon, trout, tuna, mackerel, um, sardines. These are the types of fish that can be really helpful with increasing your omega-3 intake. Um, a lot of people ask me about fish oil supplements and some of the studies do show that they could help with joint swelling, so to reduce 
joint swelling in arthritis. Um, potentially for a lot of people, it can also help reduce pain. There has been um, studies that suggest that fish oil supplements might actually help people if they've got a lot of morning stiffness. Um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, a lot of my clients with arthritis say to me, it takes me a little bit of time to get moving, but then once I do, um, I can feel a lot better. Um, so fish oil has also been linked to assist with uh, that morning stiffness, joint swelling and joint pain. So depending on how much um, you like fish or don't, might then it can be helpful then to take fish oil supplementation. We want to try and have fish at least twice a week if possible. And then on alternate days, that's when you might take some fish oil supplementation. Now, the researchers suggested that we need to try and take 2.7 grams or 2,700 milligrams of EPA and DHA to help with anti-inflammation, especially in something like rheumatoid arthritis. So when you have fish oil supplements, you'll see that most, a lot of the general ones will say 1,000 milligrams on the bottle. One capsule equals 1,000 milligrams. So a lot of my clients have said to me, well, then I'll just take three and that's 3,000, which is more than the 2,700. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. If you turn the bottle to the back, fish oil supplements will tell you a breakdown of the EPA and the DHA, and it will give you some numbers. So let's say the EPA is 400 and the DHA is 100, then that is a total of 500. So of that particular brand, you would need to take, say, five to get to 2,500 milligrams or six if you want to go to the other side of 2,700 and that equals 3,000. Um, general fish oil supplements, some of them you need to take 9 to 12 capsules to get to 2,700 milligrams of EPA and DHA. And so getting a concentrated fish oil is really important, either a capsule or a concentrated fish oil liquid, uh, like the ethical nutrients that actually says 2.7 grams on the front. You take one teaspoon to get to that amount. Um, so that could be something to consider if you want to see if fish oil supplement does assist with your pain and or joint inflammation. Okay. Sorry, Monica. Yes. Do you mind repeating that number about the fish oils? I think people are starting to record it. <laughs> oh, okay. So the total number of EPA and DHA together is 2,700 milligrams. So on an individual um, fish oil supplement bottle, you would turn it to the back. Sometimes it's on the front. It might say one capsule equals 400 EPA, 100 DHA. Add them together, which in this case would be 500. And how many times does it go into 2,700? Five to six to get either side of 2,700. And that's how you work out um, how many capsules to take of all the different brands. Uh, but my recommendation definitely is to go for something concentrated because some of the concentrated capsules, you only need to take three or four a day to get to the close to the 2,700 milligrams. Um, healthy fats also include olive oil. So olive oil is a big part of the anti-inflammatory eating plan. Um, things like uh, avocado uh, is a good fat as well. And so uh, even though um, fatty fish has got the omega-3 and uh, nuts have got good fats, uh, olive oil and avocado is another good way to um, get some of those, the synergy of those good fats into your diet. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about vegetables, fruit, uh, fatty fish, uh, lentils and legumes and nuts and seeds. So um, I, I almost always forget, but I don't want to forget that 
Another powerful part of the anti-inflammatory eating plan is to use lots of herbs and spices. Try and get into your ginger, turmeric, uh, basil, oregano, uh, parsley, sage, all of um, those herbs and spices, and then even garlic and onion, even though it's not necessarily a herb or a spice, but it's antibacterial, um, uh, anti-inflammatory, and they have lots of wonderful um, chemicals in them that can really assist with uh, all things to do with health. So, you know, turmeric has the active compound curcumin, which has been found to be anti-inflammatory. Uh, um, ginger has got um, ginger oil, which has also been found to be anti-inflammatory. So if you can flavour your food with lots of these um, beautiful herbs and spices, you will be adding extra anti-inflammatory properties to everything that you cook. And that's not to say that everything has to have it, but if you can incorporate it, it's much um, more helpful uh, from the anti-inflammatory point of view. And it's a good way to help you reduce salt. So what are some of the things that we need to avoid? So before I go to that, Paul, are there any burning questions that we would like to stop and pause and answer now that's to do with some of that initial part of the anti-inflammatory eating. There is a, a lot of questions. So uh, for those yeah. of you writing the questions, I am recording them. So don't worry, we are going to get to them. Um, I'll try to put them in an order as how you discussed it. So we'll start with your fruits and vegetables um, and then we'll continue from there. If that's okay, Mon. Um, so so uh, question number one is uh, how much fruit is too much fruit? Oh, yeah, good question. That's a little bit individual. Um, uh, as a dietitian, it, the times where I've had to tell people to reduce their food intake, uh, fruit intake almost feels anti-intuitive to what dietitians want you to do, and that is to increase your fruit and vegetable intake. Um, but there are definitely cases where for a lot of people, if they're eating more than three serves of fruit, they may be increasing their natural fruit sugar, which for them particularly if their sugar levels are a little bit elevated, um, it might not go so well for them. Uh, for some people, it increases their calorie intake. But I want to make it completely clear that if you have other things to reduce first, processed sugar, processed carbohydrates, um, carbohydrates that are high in glycemic index, um, lots of dried fruit, for example, we would reduce those types of sugars and those types of calories before we cut fresh fruit out of your diet. But for most people, over three serves, so four or more serves of fruit may be more than what their body can manage. The other thing to remember is to try and spread your fruit out so then your body is only dealing with a certain amount of that natural fruit sugar in any one go. But if you're, if you're going for your fourth serve of fruit because you're trying not to eat the Monte Carlo or the Tim Tam biscuit, please have the extra serve of fruit because that's always going to be much better from an anti-inflammatory point of view. So you've just finished watching part one of one of our recent educational events. Hope you enjoyed the content. If you'd like to access part two, then you need to sign up for BJC Connect. It's a free platform where you can access not just the recordings of our past events, but also access a whole range of upcoming future events and access our team of facilitators live. Um, all of the details that you need to join BJC Connect are now flashing up on the screen. But otherwise, like our stuff, subscribe if you'd like to see more information from BJC Health. Look forward to seeing you in an event soon.